subscribe and click on the bell icon to be the first to see the latest video. Please find the full course information with YouTube special discount in the description below. Hello all, welcome back. In this one, we will solve a question which was asked in Amazon interview. So according to Code Signal, first non-repeating character question is asked by Amazon. But it doesn't really matter because this kind of question can be asked by other companies as well. And this is a very interesting question. So just let's go ahead and take a look at it and we'll try to solve it. So it says that given a string and it says the string contains all small English letters, which means nothing is capital and there are no numbers in it. We need to find and return the first instance of a non-repeating character in it. And if there is no such character, then return underscore. So here's an example as well. Given the string A, B, A, C, A, B, A, D, the output should be C because A is repeated, B is also repeated, and then we find C and then C is not repeated. That's why the first non-repeating character would be C. Even though we have D also here, which is not repeated, but we were looking only for the first character. So that's why the output is C. Now here in this string, all the characters listed are repeating at least once. That's why the output is going to be underscore. So let's open Eclipse and try to solve it. So what I did here is I just created a class called first non-repeating character, created a main method, and then created a method where we're going to solve this. This takes a string and it returns a underscore if nothing is found. And then obviously we will write the logic. And here it's just calling the method with the input. So when we see something like this, the first thing that comes to our mind is that we can do a for loop, let's say A, and then compare it with all the next elements like B, A. And that comparison is going to go into a second for loop. So a for loop inside a for loop, which means a nested for loop, right? And then if we find the repeating character, then we move to the next one. And again, we try to compare it with the previous one and the later ones to figure out whether this is repeating or not repeating. But the problem is if we do a nested for loop, the space time complexity is going to be bigger of n square. Okay this is not an ideal situation, right? This is going to be very slow. If the string is very long, it's going to take a lot of time. And this kind of solution is not really looked at very nicely in the interviews, right? So what we need to do here is we need to figure out something better. First, I'm going to talk about one built-in method which can actually help us do that. And then we will actually build a logic with the second solution. So for the first solution, what we can do here is we can just iterate over the string once so let's say for int i equals to 0 to the length of the string. Here we can do a if condition if s dot index of s dot care at i is equal to s dot last index of s dot care at i. So what we are doing here, we are looping over the complete string s, which is going to be this string. And we are trying to find the index of the first one. When i is 0, this is going to be the first character and index of this is going to be the first one. Now, we just found the first index of this character, right? So, which is going to be a. Now, what we are doing here is we are trying to find the last index of the same character because we are dealing with the i. We are in the same iteration loop, right? This method returns the last index of the character that we are working with. Last index is going to be this one. So it's actually not going to return the next one that we are finding, but it's going to return this one. In our case, if we are finding any other index other than the first one, then it means the character is repeating. We don't really care if the character is repeating here or here, but we found that character A is repeating. Okay. Now what different we are doing here? We are doing equals to equals to. This means if the first index and the last index is same, then the character is not repeating. This was the catch. So first I explained you the use of index of and last index of. Now the catch is if both the index are equal, then the character is not repeating because for character C, the first index is going to be the same as the last index because it's only appearing once in the string, right? 
for this case what we can do here is we can return s dot care at i and done and if this is not equal if the first index and last index is not equal then we don't need to return that because it means they are repeating characters and in that case we just return the underscore okay let's quickly right click and run this code and it tells us first non repeating character is c which means the answer is correct let's go to the website and copy the second string example as well i'm just going to paste it here and run the code to make sure that our code is working for both the examples and this one the expected answer was underscore and we got that right so this was the easiest way but the problem here is we are just using the built in function of java and interviewers are not really interested to know that whether we know about the built in functions or not right what they are trying to understand in the interview is whether we can build some logic and whether we have a problem solving attitude or problem solving approach right so this one i'm just going to comment out right now so that you have it here and then we will think about some other way to solve this so what could be some other way we have to think about some data structure which can actually be useful in this kind of situation so that it's efficient also because we don't really want to use nested for loops how about using a hash map here hash maps are key value pairs right in this case our key could be the character in the string and the value could be how many times the character is appearing in the string this will tell us if the character is appearing more than once and any character which is appearing only once is going to be our non repeating character right so let's get started i'm going to declare a map here and the type of the map is going to be character comma integer and i'm going to call it as like count map this is just the name of the variable okay equals to new hash map now make sure you have the correct import statements java.util.hashmap and java.util.map all right now what we're going to do here is we're going to again iterate one time over the string okay so let me copy this line from here and once we iterate over this one i'm going to say char c equals to s dot char at i this is going to take the character one at a time in this variable now once we have that i'm going to say if count map dot contains key and the key i'm looking here is my character then count map dot put my character c and then count map dot get my key plus 1 what is it doing it is actually checking if the count map has a key called c which is going to be this character whatever character is saved in this variable if this condition returns true it's going to go here and it's going to add 1 to the existing value of the character in that particular key so this is going to be the key and this is the value now count map dot get c is going to get the existing value of that key what we are doing here is we are adding 1 to that existing value this statement is simply adding 1 to the existing value of the particular key and if the key doesn't exist in the map then we're going to say count map dot put key is going to be our character and value is going to be 1 this is simple right if the character already doesn't exist in the map then just say 1 because this is the first time we are encountering this character in the map okay what we have done here is we have created a key value pair of all the characters in the string now the next thing we want to do here is we will iterate one more time over the string i'm going to say here for so i'm going to put the same for loop here same statement char c equals to s dot char at i and then this time i'm going to say if count map dot get c equals to equals to 1 then return c now what we are doing here is second time when we are iterating over the string we are checking if the value of the key is only 1 then it means that it's a non repeating character because the value is only 1 so return c if not then return the underscore now you will say hey we are still using two for loops but these are two different for loops we are not using nested for loops So there's going to be no exponential action here. Space-time complexity of this is going to be n, and 
it's going to be n for the second for loop also which means space time for this is going to be 2n and 2 is just a constant so we can actually simply drop it and we can still say it's going to be n because 2n is actually nothing in programming right so this is a very efficient solution this is not like nested for loops now we're still calling the same method here we have the input here and we have commented out the previous code we wrote this one should work perfectly for us so right click run the code there you go first non repeating character is c and we can go back to find the other example and verify the underscore action as well save the file run the code and boom this one returns underscore right so we have verified both the inputs here and this code works perfectly fine and this is what interviewers are interested in they really want to know if you know the logic if you can build the logic right so this is a great example now i wanted to show you one more thing here instead of using this four lines of code here i'm just going to comment out this one and i'm going to say integer char count so i'm just declaring a variable of integer type and i'm going to say count map dot get and c so this is going to have the existing value of key and the key is any character in the for loop okay now the second line is going to be count map dot put c this is going to be key and the value is going to be char count so this is going to be the value if the char count is actually null so what i'm doing here is i'm checking if the char count is null then put 1 otherwise put char count plus 1 this is actually exactly the same thing we are doing here in the if statement so this is just a shortcut way this is a shortcut syntax to actually figure out the if condition so what we are doing here is we are checking the char count with null if the char count is null then put one here and if it's not null then put char count plus one this thing should work perfectly fine it's actually not going to improve the efficiency of the code it's just going to reduce the number of lines we write in the code so let's just quickly go ahead and run this one and here we are still getting the correct answer c so both the solutions work fine we saw multiple ways to solve it look in the description below to find the location of the code so it's going to be helpful for you always feel free to let me know if you have any questions and i'll see you in the next one thanks